Hey everyone, welcome to All Things Iceland. It is Jules and it blows my mind to think that we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the Geltingatalur eruption that happened or started on March 19th, 2021. <laughs> This was a life-changing experience for me and for so many others. So what I decided as actually for this week is to dedicate this week to a, the eruption. It's eruption week on all things Iceland. And um, like I'd mentioned in previous videos, I'm starting to do some giveaways whenever I premiere videos. And so in this premiere, I'm actually giving away a book at the very end. If you watch all the way with me, you will have the chance to win this book, which is by a Belgian photographer who I will be interviewing and will be showcased as one of the interviews this week for eruption week. <laughs> and so definitely make sure that you stay along with me. I love chatting with people as we're watching. And so I felt like this would just make it more interactive and interesting to do some giveaways during premieres. And to cap off this awesome eruption week, I will be having a viewing party of the documentary Fire and Iceland. April, who's a director, I did an interview with her, which will come out this week. It was part of this whole eruption week and we had such a great time chatting. But she had this great idea of making it available to my viewers to be able to see the documentary for free, because you normally have to pay for it. If you come to the streaming party, which will be on March 20th, so the day after the anniversary of the eruption, and there will be a donation button there for those who would like to donate to the Icelandic Search and Rescue Teams, which is an organization that is made up 100% of volunteers, and they literally train and risk their lives to save other people's lives all year long in Iceland. It's amazing the work that they do. And they do fundraisers throughout the year, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to give back to them who have helped so many. So if you would love to see this documentary, which I highly recommend, I've seen it, I've enjoyed it, I'm looking forward to watching it again at the premiere on Saturday and then at the viewing party on Sunday because the visuals are stunning, just absolutely gorgeous, as well as the insight into Icelandic culture is so good. And it, you get to hear from different people who are artists, who are part of the Icelandic search and rescue teams, who are geologists, who are people who just love the eruption or love volcanoes, love nature, who have so much passion in their hearts. And I really think that the mentality too around volcanoes and eruption and living on an island that's quite volatile is fascinating. So if you'd like to see the documentary along with me for free, use the link in the description to sign up for my newsletter and I will notify the people who sign up as to when this is happening so you can join me on March 20th. I will make sure it's a decent time for people <laughs> because Iceland time in like US and different areas and different parts of the world can vary, but I'll try my best to make it a decent time so that as many people as possible can watch along and enjoy this amazing documentary that April and her husband Martin put together. Now in terms of just kind of recapping this time, in Iceland so much was happening. I even remember when I reported on this literally the night it happened and I was actually pretty tired that evening but I was like I'm just gonna go on YouTube and tell people that the eruption is happening and they told people to stay away from the eruption but of course as I watched the news there was a long line of cars making their way out to the Reykjanes Peninsula <laughs> in order to try and see the eruption and so many amazing images, so many fantastic videos, so many accounts of this eruption came about. And for me, that's kind of what Eruption Week is about, is not only of course sharing my experience, but also showcasing the experience of others. So like I mentioned, the Belgian photographer who I interviewed, who created this book, he went to the volcanic eruption 44 times okay that's intense and and then the personal impact it had on those two individuals as well as visually what they captured is absolutely stunning and in terms of my personal experience for those who don't know i went to the eruption three different times so pales in comparison to people who went 44 times 67 times all of that jazz 
but I enjoyed it immensely and I will definitely say the first time that I saw the eruption when I saw lava just spewing out of the earth I was stunned into silence and if you know me personally you know that I'm not a person that is normally silent <laughs> I'm quite active in terms of talking and expressing myself but this was just insanely gorgeous and overpowering with its immense beauty and also the danger. It's just that the fact that New Earth was literally this molten lava was spewing out of the earth and creating new land was fantastic. And I just, it was like a magnet. It just wanted to get closer and closer. And of course I kept a safe distance because I mean, it, when you get to a certain point, you start to feel the heat anyway, and it's very obvious that you shouldn't get any closer. Not to say that everybody paid attention to that, but I am i like my life, so I did my best <laughs> to keep that life intact and also to not do anything that might cause me danger regarding getting injured. On top of that, like I think as well as, you know, the amount of coverage for this. So those who are subscribed, of course, to the regular grapevine, they did a great job of documenting the eruption and people over on Instagram and places like that. But I think what was so fascinating too about this eruption is that it gave Iceland a, a bit of a boost. Like going through what we've been going through globally, meaning the pandemic was insanely hard for everybody. And I feel like this really livened up people and gave them something to be passionate about when the eruption happened. Even if they didn't have access to be able to come and see it, the fact that it was happening was something that excited a lot of people, scared many people. Thank you to all of you who reached out to me and said things like, I hope you're safe and you know, please stay out of danger and all that jazz. I've really taken on more than I even imagined the Icelandic kind of feeling and saying thest, which is like, it will all work out in the end. I was not afraid <laughs> to be honest. I of course was a little worried about whether or not the eruption would affect any people, meaning like towns nearby or anything, but that never happened. And so we were really fortunate that this volcano ended up being what they call a forest eruption because it didn't, harm anyone and it was accessible to people. Some eruptions are happening out at sea or underwater and it's extremely hard to get access to them. So the majority of people never actually see them or they're in locations where it's just very difficult to get to. So this is just an insanely unique opportunity and I hope that you enjoy the content coming up for this week. And in general, of course, I hope you're just enjoying all things Iceland. I know that I love bringing all sorts of content your way. But I'd love to hear in the comments of this video, if you did go to the eruption, what was that like for you? And for those who were unable to come, what was it like seeing it from afar? What kind of thoughts were going through your head? Let me know because I think it's just super interesting to hear these different perspectives of people who are from all different parts of the world. Some people like Icelanders who live in places where it's volatile and things can happen and you just kind of take it day by day and not worrying too much about what might happen in the future. So if you're excited about Eruption Week, definitely make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed because as I mentioned, giveaways are coming. I have so many different things that I think you'll love in terms of giveaways. It will always be something in relation to Iceland. So like I mentioned in this book and other things that I don't wanna, I wanna tell you yet because it's a surprise and I think you're gonna love it. Of course, make sure to share this with somebody who you think would find it interesting and would love to win something from Iceland. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you throughout Eruption Week.